Let's bring in Daryl Morey, the Rockets GM. Nice little offseason. And now he can talk without getting in trouble because we tried to get him on. He said, I have to wait till this deal is official with Russell Westbrook. And Daryl joins us on the program. How's your offseason been, Daryl? Good. Hey, got two MVPs now, so we're happy. All right. How much do you confer with your head coach, Mike D'Antoni, on making this work with James Harden and Russell Westbrook? A lot. I mean, we're... Uh... We're a pretty uh, tight knit group at the Rockets. Uh, it's group decision making, and obviously, you know, there's there's a final decision made. But every everyone's input is really important. When, how long you've been working on getting Westbrook? It moved pretty quickly. It was, you know, just the Paul George situation obviously opened the window, and uh, did not anticipate uh, him being available until that happened, and then moved about over the next six days or so after that well wait once you knew paul george was on the move then do you call up sam presti and the thunder and say russell westbrook available not quite uh, first uh reached out just to say hey you know what's the direction of the team now uh, obviously when a move like that happens it, it makes you say hey maybe that team's going in a different direction all right, so then how do you come up with, do you start the offer? Or do they come back and say, hey, by the way, we're thinking about moving Russ, are you interested? Well, first ask for the direction of the team, and then uh, after that we, we discussed, okay, maybe they're, maybe they're looking at the possibility of, of moving some of their other key players. Uh, spoke with ownership, with Coach D'Antoni, uh, with James Harden, and – you know, acquiring Westbrook at that point was something that we were interested in. And, and then it's a matter of just working out, uh, working out the details about how to do it. What was Harden's reaction when you first broached the topic? Uh, very enthusiastic because, you know, he knows he plays well together with him because they've done it uh, both on OKC and USA Basketball and, and growing up. So uh, he, he was enthusiastic. Do you are you waiting for the apology with me, or do you want to wait till the very end of the interview? <laughs> I should have gone with ninety nine point nine percent. You can never say <laughs> never. That's why when you said that he he was not tradable, untouchable, Harden and Paul and I went. The only reason why Paul is untouchable is because of that contract. I think if he had a better contract and you could have moved him, you would have moved him. And I said that when you were done with the interview, and I still feel that way. That contract was tough to move, and you somehow moved it, so I applaud you on that. But I do accept your apology when you said <laughs> on this show that you I were – I did on this show. Yeah. I did. I, I would say oh, – I should always say 99.9. Yes. I, mean, I just never thought <laughs> – I never thought Russell Westbrook would become available. Um, in terms of, like, the one thing I would disagree, people talk about, you know, players – uh, with unmovable contracts, when you're when you're a top 25 player in the league, which I think Chris Paul is, you you it's, you can't really overpay them. People people sort of miss that. Uh, uh, there's there's maybe more efficient ways to spend money, uh, but the reality is that's only if you can have a, a baseball roster, a roster of you know 15 guys who might play and impact the game. And in basketball, it's really your only. Only your first few guys and only seven or eight who play at all. So you need your top few to be top, top in the league. So And, and Chris Paul is amazing for us and uh, still a very, very good player. How much friction was there between Harden and Paul with just playing style? Or you know, I guess you can incorporate a lot of things into that topic, but how much friction was there? Yeah, I think we talked about that last time. I mean, for me, it was it was uh, less friction than you might expect for most superstars. We've had a lot of superstar pairings at, at the Rockets, and uh, um, Chris and, and James got together really well. Really? Okay. Yeah. It felt like it, it was getting more hero ball than Chris Paul cared for, and it felt like there were a couple of moments where – you know, he's he's saying something or addressing Harden, and Harden is dismissing that. And I don't know if we're making – we made too much of it, but it just felt like Chris Paul wears his feelings on his sleeve, and he was the one that was not hiding it. How do you uh, – Yeah, I think they both do. I, I, I didn't uh, – yeah, I, I didn't see – I didn't see a lot of tension there. The, for sure they had the interaction in game six that, that people wrote about, but I, I – 
that was like 40 times a year for me. So I thought too much, too much was made of it. Yeah. He's Daryl Morey, the Rockets GM joining us, Dan Patrick show, this whole tampering. And if you were commissioner or you were going to advise the commissioner coming from a general manager's perspective, how can we get rid of tampering? Well, I thought the commissioner was on on the right direction there, which is they when the league has rules, they should have rules that they enforce and they enforce vigorously. Vigorously, uh, so some of the tampering rules were were basically impossible to enforce, and you know it made it made a bad look for the league. So I think you know it sounds like they're in the direction of loosening up some of the conversation rules while keeping some of the rules that are real, uh, you know, more. Uh, more, more direct tampering with uh, inducements and things like that. So uh, it seems like Commissioner Silver's on the right right path, but they haven't passed anything yet. Yeah, you certainly take the analytical approach, and I'm wondering now what you think of load management with uh, two higher energy guys on your team now and how important it is to have Harden and Westbrook rested for the postseason. So is load management part of the strategy for you? Yeah, it always is. We try not to label it or, or make it a make it a big deal. But we have a great great training staff, and uh, obviously our goal is just to win the title this year. We're not you know looking for any regular season goals. Everyone on our teams won won pretty much every award you can, except except the championship. So uh, yeah, it'll be a very uh, a very uh, put together plan by our staff throughout the season to to have our guys peak in in April. Is there anybody you would take over Harden in in your basketball career as far as just being able to score the the basketball? You can have anybody. No, no, not even close, actually. Like Jordan, Uh, you would not take Jordan over James Harden. Oh, 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 you mean like all of history? I thought you meant someone who was on the Rockets. No, 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 no. I got you. I got you. So anybody, Um, you can have anybody. uh, Jeez, I... uh, I'm pretty partial to our guy in terms of just scoring. Yeah, just if you just say efficient scoring, yeah, you know, James Harden's number one. So, but what do you think Jordan would average now? Uh, he's a really, really good player. So um, <laughs> he would average forty-five, Daryl. <laughs> well, we have to get uh, we have to get uh, uh, stats inc to create uh, classic basketball so that wait wait can... you really think Harden is a greater scorer now he's a better shooter they're they're different but Harden takes advantage of everything he can possibly take advantage of but do you think he's a better score just score than Michael Jordan if I mean if you look historically and you just say how you know given the number of times he has the ball and give it and given uh, how how efficient. I think the only one who comes close is actually Will Chamberlain when when you go back through history. So Yeah. Say, how many how many points are you gonna score after I give you the ball? You or your team? It's it's really James and Wilt. He's working on a new move and he says it's not traveling. I think the last move that he worked on he said was not traveling either. Have you seen this new move by James Harden that's not traveling? I have not. I've never seen James Harden travel. So <laughs> <laughs> that's that funny. Double step back. I the watch. Double step back might be. <laughs> I watch him travel every game. Yeah, I, all all the time. There is he going to put out a video that says this is not traveling? So everybody in the NBA, including the commissioner, will sign off on this. <laughs> I know that's not how it works. It, it's more. Uh, it's more like gymnastics. You unveil the move and then they name it after you <laughs> after you do it. <laughs> so. Uh, great to catch up with you. Congrats on the deal. And uh, we'll hopefully talk to you as we head closer to the season. Thanks for having me on, Dan. I appreciate That's it. That's Daryl Morey. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune into Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV. Stream for free on BR Live or download the Dan Patrick Show app.